for this wonderful gathering this afternoon that God has allowed us not only to celebrate in this wonderful anniversary, but above all, to glorify the one who is worthy of praise and honor, <coughs> majesty and dominion, who is on the throne without beginning and no end, the God of all gods and the King of all kings, Jesus Christ our Lord. How I thank God this afternoon and today that many of our friends are here, many of the families, husband and wife, pastors and wife, and, and the time that we're already just enjoying to celebrate. Now, I thank God, it is something, I thank God that we are living in a nation called Australia where there is peace and there is no war in the land. Amen. From the western Australia to the eastern Australia to the north and to the south, up to Tasmania, we have the freedom to come together without any threat or any intimidation or fear or paralyzed with some kind of anxiety. We can lift up our hands, we can sing the song in the heat of the day. We have the roof and electric fun to enjoy. Why we thank God, the, peace, the peaceful nation of Australia. Lovingly, respectfully to other countries of the world, we are better and prosper nation compared to others. And we can say that many people are risking their lives to just to come and see and live in the nation of Australia from other nations of the world using the boat to come to this place. This afternoon, I want you to see that there is no permanent thing in this world. No permanent thing in this world. Everything is shakeable and everything has an end. But in a few moments, I give you a wonderful message about a changed heart, which is timely message for this day and age. So, many are changing. The great nation of the world are slowly going down. The economy of the world is being rocked like a boat in the midst of a tempest to sea or a storm of the white sea. We know that America has shut down and with about 18 trillions of dollars in debt, the hearts of the many people are melting Nowhere to find a place of refuge, a place of security, in a place of peace. This afternoon, I will cite just two examples of events that is really applicable to all of us and give importance and give attention because it will dictate the destiny of your tomorrow. Amen. And so I'm reading to you of the story of the one particular event in the Old Testament and we'll be informed centuries ago and we can learn and we can be informed <coughs> and then receive the message, a wonderful message from God that there is hope after all, anyone who desires to have a change of heart. Genesis chapter 6, to, to that point, and just want, I want you to have a glimpse of the yesterdays, many centuries ago, in the life of a man, a man that is a godly man, a righteous man, by the name of Noah in the Old Testament. Just to read to you, and then I'll jump to the main exposition of another event. Here is the word of the Lord, starting from verse, chapter 6, verse 11. Now the book takes. Now the earth had become corrupt in God's eyes, and it was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world, and he saw the violence and the poverty everywhere. In the other translation, the imagination of man neuter and gender, men and women, are evil continually. And so God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all the living creatures, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Yes, I will wipe them all from the face of the earth. 
I will wipe them all from the face of the earth. That's it. You can see from the message of Moses from the Old Testament. Now, first thing that you can understand that the first group of people during the time of Noah, the whole population, two things. They rejected the message from God during the time of Noah. Now, Pastor, how can they know the message of Noah? It's just after Adam and Eve and the next generation of Noah, chapter 5 and chapter 6. Now, I want you to understand and to hear, God will never allow anyone to suffer perdition or destruction without His preliminary kind of information for you to understand that there is God in the heavens and the earth. Now, Noah is the message of God. Noah and the whole family, they were there just like a living epistle, a living kind of message for them to understand that Noah and the whole family, all of them, were worshipping the God of the heavens and the earth. So Noah is the message of that time. Another message from the, then, from the ancient time to the present time, we have what we call the natural revelation of God. Now, the invisible things... The things that God has created, the heavens. We're talking about the starry heavens for the moon and the stars and the galaxy and the Milky Way and billions and billions of stars in the, st in the, in the, in the sky. And then the living organism in the planet Earth, the fish under the sea, all the living creatures on the planet Earth. Those things are revealing it was created by omnipotent, powerful hand of God and those are messages that no one in the planet Earth has excuse. The invisible things before the foundation of the, of the world was clearly seen. Being understood, the things are created by a divine power, so men, women, they have no excuse. Now, I want you to say another thing, that God in the past, before He destroyed, the Bible is very clear, God is not his lack concerning his promise. By the way, Jesus is coming again. He is not tardy, he is not slow to his promises. But his long suffering, long, long suffering, that God is not willing that anyone shall perish or be destroyed or go to hell, but each one will be given the opportunity to repent and understand that God is love. And so we can see, God, every human being in the planet Earth, from the first century church to the 21st century, in our time of, you know, computer age, X, Y, Z, go back to A again, of generation, whatever it is, God is revealing that from the invisible things created by God, no one is excused. And God is giving, even to us this afternoon, that everyone will come to the realization in understanding that in the patience and endurance of God that one day, one day I might open my heart, you might open your heart and say God I need you, I come to you in a split of second because man's believe it from the heart and by your mouth confession Lord I need you come into my heart, you will be saved He's not willing that anyone shall perish but everyone should come to repentance but the human heart rejected the human heart re re resisted the truth of God. And what happened? They pushed away from themselves. I don't need the word of God. I don't need God. I'm living in a rich and powerful nation of the world. I'm better off. I'm okay. I have a work, a stable job, in a car, in a house. And the bills are being paid weekly or monthly. And so you can see that there is a need of God today. So during the time of Noah, the imagination of man is even continually. And God said, okay, you know what? I will destroy the nation of the earth. I want you to prepare, okay, two animals, male and female, from different species, and bring them to the boat. Bring them to the boat. Make a boat. Noah, bring all these animals, two by two, male and female. And aside from that, also seven animals. So you, some of that animals you can eat, and some of those animals you can offer to me as a sacrifice. Make a bow. But I would say, I would say, stop the bow. I want you to know, whoever is in the government, well, we're going to pray for them. The elected officers of the government, 
we're going to lift them up in prayer because God will give them wisdom and ability how to rule and govern Black Town Council, the Parliament, by the wisdom and the power of the Almighty God. So, okay, now we're prepared. And the boat is about 540 or 550 in length, feet. And then there's about uh, 75 feet in width and about 45 feet in height. And I want you to make a three compartment, the first deck, sec the second deck, and the third deck. And I want you to make some kind of opening around that, uh, around that boat. And then make a, a, a place for uh, you and the animal to enter in. And then later on, God said to Noah, one week from today, I will begin the 40 days and 40 nights of rain. And I will wipe from the earth all the living things I have created. Now I want you to see, God did it, opening of all the bodies of water underground from the rain and all from the mountain. And according to the word of God, finally the water covered even the highest mountains of the earth. It's standing more than 20 feet above the highest mountain. And we're talking about five months time. 40 days of rain, another 150 days of water over the face of the earth and no animal survived. Only the animal came in with Noah, two by two, pair by pair, and the seven good uh, animal to be eaten and to be sacrificed to the Lord. Now the Bible says the water covered the earth for 150 days. Now in this revelation, of people before the flood, I want you to see and understand, God was so sorry that the people choose sin and death instead of relationship with Him. And number two, the people sin grieve the heart of God. Our sins today, in my indifference to the things of God, to the Word of God, to the things that are holy to the Lord, I am taking just for casually or take for granted, it makes the Lord Jesus Christ grieve as it was at the time of Noah. And the Bible says because of this, May the love of many shall die down or shall wax cold. It will grow cold. May we find a place in our hearts this afternoon to say, God, you are important to me. May we find a place in our mind today and you can say verbally, vocally, audibly, silently, in our hearts and our mind, Lord Jesus, I need you. Now in the midst of the great population, just eight people of many, many, many hundreds of thousands and millions of people during the time of Noah perished, but just eight members of the family, Noah and the wife, and the children and their wives, were spared by God. God remembered them, and He will begin again to repopulate the world through these eight, uh, four couples in the life of Noah. I want you to see the comparison of this for all men. We're going to see now in the book of Jonah, and this is where we can apply to our present time. Follow me, and again, I need your undivided attention from the Word of God. Now, this is a story about Nineveh. It is a pagan place. Assyrians was uh, controlling this uh, country about 8th uh, century BC. Now I want you to understand, God extended to this land of Nineveh so they might understand that in the midst of this horrible kind of lifestyle which is contrary, yucky, so dirty and filthy and horrific, I will just give you some description. During the time of Nineveh, when they kill a person, when they go to fighting, not only they'll kill you with an, whatever knife or spear, whatever, they'll cut your head. They'll gut your eyes. They'll skin you. They will dismember all over your body and get the, the inside of your body. And in Assyria during the time, Nineveh was the enemy of Israel for many years. They've been there attacking Israel for many years. So I want you to understand that even the horrible place called Nineveh, God extended the invitation for them to understand in spite of God is loving you. Come to Him and repent and you'll see that change of heart. Amen. 
Now, according to the Word of God, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. And the, okay, the command of the Lord announced my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. I want you to say that God said, okay, Jonah, get up. I want you to proclaim, announce the judgment, the forecoming judgment for Nineveh. I want, now, in the succeeding verses, here is Jonah, a man and godly man from Israel, a prophet of God, instead of obeying the command of God to go to that horrible place to be, he was adamant, he was so against prejudice of some kind of all the things combined, he doesn't want to go. Now, in the first place, I want you to put it in a practical, in a uh, uh, contextualized example. Put it this way, God is saying to you, Jonah or message of hope or brother or pastor, I want you to go to Pakistan and proclaim Jesus. I want you to go to North Korea and proclaim Jesus to Kim Jong II. The tendency is, God, are you sure? No way, I don't want to go there. When I go there, it means what? Death. So basically, here is Jonah, he doesn't want to go there. And so what he did, he went to another, an opposite direction to the west, going to Tarshish. And then the Bible is very clear in the story that Noah was sleeping at the deck of the ship and there was a boisterous kind of storm. And everybody was afraid and they called upon their God and everybody called upon their God and they finally looked for everybody to pray. They threw away some of the big baggages so it would float. Instead of getting better, it's getting worse. They found Jonah. Jonah, wake up. Pray to your God. And then finally, in the course of conversation, they found out that the cause of that the more, a boisterous kind of a storm because of Jonah in his relationship to God of being disobedient. And, not, and, and Jonah said, Sir, to the chief, could you just throw me away overboard? So there is the peace, the calmness of the ocean. They throw him. And God providentially gave a big fish and swallow Jonah. And according to the word of God, Jonah spurred on the, the, the belly of the fish. And God answered Jonah right there. And then later on, because of the prayer of Jonah in chapter 2, God gave the fish. Then of course, the, the blessing is spitted out on the seashore. And, and Jonah was spitted out to the seashore. Once again, God said to Jonah, for the second time, God spoke to Jonah the second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message of judgment I have given you. Go to the city of Nineveh and give the message I have given you. I want you to understand that get up, great city of Nineveh, this city of Nineveh is great in influence, powerful during the time. Great in material prosperity, even the fertility of the land is super, so blessed. Not only they are rich and there are influential and powerful city during the time, they also, the city was also great in the area or sites. But above all, it is also great in doing evil so that Jonah doesn't want to go there in that land. I want you to understand now as I'm getting to the main message, deliver the message. I read to you. The time, this time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. Three days to see it all and proclaim in Jonah. On the day, the moment he entered into that city, on that day, entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. Remember Old Testament, the book of Genesis? How many nights and day the flood? It was 40 days and 40 nights flood. For five months time, the whole population during the time of Noah or Paris, they all died. Now, another one we can 